Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. sins and bring us to everlasting life. mercy, 
from the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast. Kindle, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing our responsorial psalm found at number 96. This is the day, number 96. from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world 
but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Dynamis, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered him and said, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. How often on TV we see these infomercials. Buy this pan and it'll solve all your problems when you cook. Buy this, this vacuum and you'll have the cleanest house on the block. 
How many of us remember the sham wow back from the, uh, the late 90s and early 2000s? Buy this piece of cloth, it'll wipe up everything. It'll be brand new every time. Often when we see these infomercials, we think to ourselves, it is too good to be true. And how often in our own lives do we hear something that we just couldn't possibly believe? Perhaps you need to see it to believe it. There is a healthy skepticism that we bring to the table when we have some doubt. We don't want to get our hopes up only to be disappointed. We want proof, real proof, and that is precisely Thomas's reaction on hearing the news about Jesus's resurrection. Though the disciples had been witness to the risen Lord on Easter Sunday evening, Thomas was absent and he was so he serves as a model for all of us. In a sense, we stand in the person of Thomas. We were not present on that Easter Sunday evening thousands of years ago. And perhaps like Thomas, we reply, seeing is believing. The beatitude that Jesus speaks to Thomas, peace be to you, is meant for all of us. Blessed are those who have not seen, but believed. Jesus calls us his friends in this gospel, and it is a friendship that can never be broken. It is a hallmark of peace. In today's gospel, Jesus appears to his disciples and shows them his hands and his side. And later he invites the doubting Thomas to touch the marks from the nails and the gash from the soldier's lance. We all have our scars from our own Good Fridays, per se, that remain despite our small experiences of resurrection. Our nail marks, you might think, remind us that of pain, of grief, of suffering, ridicule, and anguish can be transformed into healing and peace in the love of God we experience from others and that, what, that we extend to them when we see people hurting. Jesus tells Thomas and the others not to be afraid of the nail marks, the scars, the crushed spirit or the broken heart, compassion, forgiveness, justice, no matter how clumsily can offered, can heal and mend. We all have these scars we carry. Most of the scars we carry are invisible to our own eyes. But to the eyes of God, he sees the scars that we carry. He wants us to open our minds and our hearts to him and his healing love. He offers us peace. But how often do we accept the peace of God? That's something we want to think about. Jesus begins with peace, and this should be our own starting place as well. We cannot be disciples of the Lord unless peace reigns in our hearts. As Christians, we must regularly examine our conscience to discern if our hearts are full of Christ's peace or if they become bogged down by anger, bitterness, anxiety, useless hope. Until we are firmly rooted in peace, we cannot go forth to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. When the good news is preached by people who do not embody the message, it becomes distorted. Let us remember this gospel to have healthy doubt and skepticism, that is a good thing, but also that we are blessed by faith that even though we were not there that Easter Sunday night 2,000 years ago, we still believe in the risen Christ. And whatever scars we have, let God heal them by his peace and his love. Let me end with this thought. What does it take for us to believe that our faith makes a difference. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess with baptism and forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers before the Lord, who through his resurrection offers us peace. For the church and her leaders, that she may be a beacon of Christ's peace in the world, helping to reconcile differences and bring people together in faith, hope, and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may always promote peace, justice, and the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who, like Thomas, struggle with doubts and uncertainties in their faith journey, may they encounter the risen Lord in their lives and find peace in his presence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of reconciliation and healing, especially within families and communities torn apart by conflict or misunderstanding, may the peace of Christ lead them towards forgiveness and unity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and those in the shadows of life, may they feel the comforting presence of the Lord beside them and find strength in his peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for all human life, that we may honor God's gift of life, promote the dignity of each person, and protect it from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly our family members, our friends, and our fellow parishioners. Marcel Louis Mura, Connie Ricotta, William Wright, Eric Angelus Sr. May God welcome them into the company of their saints forever. And at this Mass, we remember Michelle Monteleone, Richard Cochen, Rosina Goya, and the unborn and the protection of human life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever living God, you sent your Son into the world to bring peace and salvation. Hear the prayers of your faithful, and grant us the grace to live as witnesses of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn number 783, We Walk by Faith, number 783.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our passion has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philip, blessed Michael McGively, and all the saints who have con oh, whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Arthur, our retired Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And you are compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, Amen, Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. There were people of all ages gathered around the gable wall, poor and humble men and women, little children.
that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Good morning again, everyone. Our parish is hosting a trip to the Sight and Sound Theater to see Daniel on May 21st. We have a few tickets left. The price is $175 per person. It includes theater ticket, lunch, and transportation. More information is in the, in the bulletin. Please join us today for Sunday, Sunday of Divine Mercy to pray the Chapel of Divine Mercy for exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and for confessions from three to four o'clock this afternoon. Just as Thomas did not believe that Jesus was risen, Sometimes it's hard to believe that we are worthy of God's forgiveness. Please come this afternoon to experience this great sacrament of confession, reconciliation, and praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Be sure to pick up a copy of our bulletin to read my pastor's column and to stay updated with all things St. Philip's. Immediately after Mass, uh, thanks to the Knights of Columbus, the um, ancient order of Hibernians, Columbiates, uh, Columbiates, the Knights of Columbus, we are blessing a memorial stone in, in memory of those children who were killed by the great sin of abortion. So the, uh, we'll lead us out a little differently today. Um, so I ask if anyone would like to join us after Mass, we're going to be right outside on the left-hand side. Thank you, and God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. By the mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.